gentlemen, this is Henry Fonda. I'm an actor, not an historian, but at this moment, history is recording a march of events which affects every one of you looking at this screen. I'm going to tell you a little more about it in a minute or two, but first I want you to meet a great American and a man who is one of our most dedicated and valuable public servants, the Honorable Robert A. Lovett, Secretary of Defense. Our principal aim today and the goal toward which we all struggle is a period of peace during which all may lead secure and useful lives. American women can and must play an important role if we are to realize that goal. Every day in every city and town in our land, we see continuing demonstrations that American women know how to do a job. Whether she is a teacher, a doctor, a defense worker, a housewife, or a nurse in Korea, and for further word about the splendid work of a special group of thousands of American women, I'd like you to hear the words of testimony uttered by General Matthew Ridgway while decorating an army nurse just before he left Korea to take his new assignment in Europe. The hundreds of vital duties being handled by the service women of the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force in the Far East Command are too numerous to mention, but their importance cannot be minimized. Without the efficient, devoted, tireless, and frequently courageous services these splendid women render, our missions here would fall far short of successful accomplishment. Whether it be the military nurse ministering to the sick and wounded, the enlisted woman in communications, administrative or medical work, or a woman officer in essential staff or operational duty, the story is always the same. Duty well performed. I wish that the parents, relatives, and loved ones of our service women over here could see their fine manner of performance. They would be proud, just as we are, who serve with them. Our service women have accepted the full challenge of American citizenship, the challenge to help keep our nation the great, free, God-fearing country it is. Keep our nation great. Those words from General Ridgway are backed up by millions of open-minded Americans who have come to realize there is a place for women in the armed forces of our nation, particularly so at a time when the need is so great, when no asset must be wasted. In World War II, I saw many of the hundreds of thousands of women who handled dozens of non-combatant jobs previously held by men. Now they've taken over hundreds of job classifications and in many cases perform their chores not only as well, but better than men. These jobs have a real challenge with some honest-to-goodness built-in satisfaction. Let's take a look. Waves who teach enlisted men the meaning and operation of pressurized compartments and cabins are part of a new scheme of things, in step with the march of scientific miracles of electronics. Special schools prepare these women for important and exciting posts in several fields of operation, including communications. A technician with a more personal touch is a WAC dental hygienist, also a product of a special service school. Many a flyer is in the air today partly because of the Marine who called the shots during blind flying practice in a link trainer. Once the pilot is in the air, these WAF weather observers will help keep him out of trouble with up-to-the-minute reports on winds and other disturbances. The whereabouts of all aircraft, friendly or otherwise, is of paramount importance to our air commands, and the women who interpret the patterns on the radar scopes have a vital job affecting the safety and security of our shores. This is a feminine traffic cop, formally labeled an air traffic control specialist. Do your talents run toward photography? This can lead to interesting developments. Women who have a feeling for design and line are turned into crack map makers. From playing in a 
unit band or orchestra to a job in a hush-hush intelligence department demonstrates the extremes of service for women. Just as important to the overall picture of service are the posts where you expect to find women at work. Nurses in the Army, Navy, and Air Force pride themselves on attracting only the best women in the nursing field, all of whom are commissioned officers. Trained physiotherapists work wonders with sick or wounded men in service hospitals. Yet not only must muscles be restored, but the mind and spirit too. Occupational therapists and their assisting medical technicians help immensely in this respect. Seemingly, there is no end to the talents and skills which women can make available to the armed forces. The formulae of the biochemist is also a weapon in the arsenal of defense. But there is more to it than just serving. It's a rare woman who doesn't like to travel in foreign lands, see things in places which formerly existed only in a geography book or tourist folder. Yet travel is not the only broadening influence offered by the services. Sports and recreational activities provide a continuing dividend for women who invest in a service hitch. And here too, there is great variety for all. Leisure time in all the services offers a talented girl a chance to express herself in camp entertainment programs. For every woman, there's an opportunity for a generous interlacing of social life to help develop the personality, along with new contacts that have the invigorating flavor of different backgrounds and interests. Never is there a feeling of isolation. Daily Mail Call is a constant link with family and friends. Meanwhile, life on the post holds forth the best in living conditions, from fine food to the comfortable informality of dormitory-style life. Compulsory courses in deportment and correct personal habits highlight the service's genuine concern for the nation's daughters in uniform. Church services of all denominations and chaplain guidance are available at every post. Never is there a camp dance without cheerful chaperonage that has more of a spiritual rather than strategic effect on the young people. Every woman's health is checked constantly, and the best in medical care is instantly available. But fitness actually starts with a character check on every candidate even before she enters a branch of service. The girl who finally makes up her mind to join one of the services has her own reasons for doing so, and yet there is a certain sameness in the fabric of her motivation that matches that of all women who enlist. A pattern that involves not only patriotism and duty, but a desire for self-advancement. But these are not new qualities in American women. Throughout history, our women have endowed this nation with their hearts, their hopes, their spirit of sacrifice. Women like Molly Pitcher and Clara Barton, or the fearless gingham-clad women who rode the Oregon Trail. Nor is there any indication that women today are denying their historical and emotional heritage, their background of prideful service. These women marching so proudly are just as dedicated just as devoted to that heritage as women who have gone before them. And we shall be a better, a more secure nation because of them.